In this video, we're gonna be using Django Forms to take our table of scores, which looks something like this, and turn it into this, which has buttons and fields. And the best part is that we don't have to write a whole bunch of HTML because Django takes care of the majority of that for us. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, make sure you're in your Django project and you have your virtual environment active. And what we're gonna do is go into our app directory. And in here, we're gonna make a new file called forms.py. We will import a few things. So from Django, import forms, and we're gonna import our model as well. So from score.models, import score. And again, this is the directory score. Inside the directory score, there is a file called models.py, and there is our score class. Okay, so in here, we're also gonna define a class, and the class name is going to be score form. Okay, it's a form for our score and that's gonna be inheriting from forms.model form, okay? And the reason we can access that is because we import forms right here. Now, this class is gonna have two attributes. One of them is going to be the model that we wanna associate with, and the other one's gonna be the, the fields that we want to show up in the form. And actually, this all happens within another one of those meta classes, so it's a, it's a class within a class. So Inside of our class, we're gonna define our meta class. And in here, we're gonna define those two fields. So the first one is the model that we wanna associate with this form, and that is the score model, okay? We're pulling that in here. And then the fields that we wanna show up, because you know sometimes you might have a form where you don't want all the fields to show up. So the fields, we're gonna be explicit with that. We want the name field to show up and the value field to show up as well. And honestly, from the forms.py file, that's about all we have to do. So let's go ahead and save that. Now, in our views.py file, we want to pass that form into here so that we can then pass it into our template via the context. So let's go ahead and do that. From score.forms import score form. That's what we just created. And in here, we'll start out, uh, we'll, say, we'll say the form initially, we're just gonna instantiate an empty form, so score form, and the syntax of that looks like that. And then down here at the bottom, we'll say context, we'll give it a, uh, another value in this dictionary called form that we can access in our template, and we'll assign the score form to that. So we're defining, we're instantiating an empty score form here with the name form, and we're gonna pass that into our context and keep the name form in there. Okay, so now we can work with that form in index.html. So let's go over there, inside of our templates directory and index.html. And uh, just to start off, after our table, let's display this form. So I'm gonna wrap it in a uh, HTML form, uh, open and close tag. So form, open, form, close. And then in here, we're gonna access our form with the double curlies, form, close, double curly. So what that's gonna do is print out our name field and our value field. So let's test it out to make sure that works. We'll go up a directory and run our server and refresh our page. This is what we had before. And now, as expected, we see our name field and our value field. Okay, so this is a good start, but I kind of want these fields to be part of my table. So for example, let's go back to our simple example here. I want the first row of the table to be the fields so that I can just come in here and add another name and another value like this. So let's go ahead and set that up. I'm gonna minimize this and we'll go out of our server, go into our app directory, and then I'm gonna edit the index.html file again. and. For now, I'm gonna get rid of what we just did and do something kind of similar up here for the first row in the table. So right before we start uh, printing out the rows in the table, the first row is always gonna be an empty row where we can add a new name and a new value. So how do we do that? Well, the form is composed of the individual fields. So you can actually loop over the form and for each field print out those uh, individual fields in another column. So let's do that. So we're gonna have a table row here in the beginning and inside that table row, we'll do our for loop. So 
for each field in the form. Okay, we have access to this because we pass it in via the template context. I'm gonna end for just so we don't forget. And now each uh, each field we want to have a new column associated with that. So we'll make a new table data for each field. And there's only two fields and we have two columns in our table. So that matches up perfectly. Okay, that looks good. Let's save that, run our server and see how things look. So we'll come back here and refresh the page. And as expected, we have these two fields now part of our table. We're off to a great start here, but we're missing one very critical thing, and that is buttons. What good is a form without buttons? I want another column here that has, you know, maybe a save button here, and then for each row, uh, an edit button and a delete button. So let's add some buttons to our table. So let's minimize this, get out of our server, go into our directory for our app, and then open up index.html in our templates directory. So first thing we want to do is to add that third column and we'll define that in our header, which I just realized that I closed that with a table data, not a table header. So we'll add another table header element and this will be, we'll just call it action and we'll close that. All right, good. So now we have that third column. So for each row in the table, we want to make sure we have something to display there. So for our first row, let's add a save button after the name and the value field. So we can do that pretty easily. We'll come over here and do uh, table data inside of this table data element. We will add a button element with the name of save and and the content for that will be save and we'll close out our button element. So that's good for that first row. And for each of our other rows, which already have data in the database, we want to be able to either edit them or to delete them. So after the name, so the first column's the name, the second column's the value, the third column should be the button. So let's go ahead and add a third column here. I'm gonna put this on two lines because we're gonna have two buttons associated with each row. And the first element is going to be a button with the name of edit and that's gonna be, have the content of edit, which is actually gonna appear on the button. And then another button here with the name of delete. And that's gonna say delete. We'll close that and we'll close that. And I just realized um, the names, let's give all the names lowercase, the names of the buttons lowercase letters, and then the actual buttons, the text that's gonna show up on the button will have uh, capital letters. So I think that looks good. That should do what we want it to. So let's go ahead and back out of here and run our server, refresh our page. And now we have a table, exactly what I was looking for. The first row, we can edit it or we can add a new element to our table by clicking the save button. And then each existing row, we can either edit it or delete it. Now, obviously these don't do anything right now, but that's what we'll be taking care of in the next video when we actually make these buttons do something. Create, read, update, delete, that's called CRUD, and we'll be looking at that next.